Hello there, and welcome to lecture one of chapter one. Um, what you don't know is that this is actually my fourth try trying to record this lecture. So, what I do for this class. Anyway, I see that, well, I'm looking at myself, and it's very delayed and weird, but I'm going to go with it. So, hopefully... It's good enough, and you don't need to look at me that closely anyway, because we are here to learn and not just look at me. So I'm playing around with this a little bit, and uh, let's get going. And so anyway, like I said, I did this a few times already, so fourth time's a charm. Um, I'm hoping that you can still see me a little bit. I don't know. Uh, so I've jumped onto Wiley Plus, and I'm in the first module, and I'm not going to do this every time, but just so you kind of know, in the back of my mind, when I instruct, you want to be answering these learning objectives. Um, so chapter one module at a glance, there's these learning objectives of the six levels of organization, the 11 body systems, da 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 da, da. Uh, We're going to do a few in this first recording. And then a separate recording for a few more and a separate recording for a few more. I thought I could uh, limit my recordings to 15 minutes, but that turns into me staring at the clock and freaking out and deleting a recording. So I know myself and I'm not going to look at the clock. I'm just going to break when it's comfortable and natural. And you need to pause and break when it's comfortable and natural for you as well. So what I want to remind you of is the content you're responsible for are the learning objectives. You'll have these lectures you can look at. They're optional. If you don't want to look at them, don't look at them. Um, but then also in the rest of the module, you will have, let's see, my picture's over the scroll bar, uh, the different sections of the chapter, little concept checks along the way for you to know. Remember, you have the e-text. And you'll have other little mini assignments. Um, there's due dates. Maybe you're seeing this for the first time. I hope not. Uh, this is all on Wiley Plus. I already talked about that. And then there's a homework and a quiz. So all of this for your due dates is due either Friday the 21st or um, Sunday the 23rd. Doesn't mean you have to do it when it's due. You can do it whenever during the week. And it's my... Hmm. What is it? My my hopes that you will be working on these throughout the week, um, like you would be attending my lecture. So, got to be a little disciplined to manage this material. Otherwise, it it, it won't be pretty. Right, I'm getting comfortable. <laughs> uh, so, I've put on the PowerPoint. I'm recording my whole active window. Oh, oh! I didn't bring my phone up, so I don't have to silence it. Uh, so, let's get started. All right, so chapter one is kind of a put your toe in the water, get kind of comfortable lecture that has a whole slew of vocabulary at the end and is pretty comfortable at the beginning and maybe a few new concepts in the middle. I anticipate it to be three lectures total. Uh, I don't read the slide to you. You have the PowerPoint slide as a separate place on the module if you wanted to look at it without my lecture. Um, but we're going to start. So you are taking anatomy and physiology part one. We're starting with chapter one and this first section just says, hey, what is anatomy? Anatomy is your structure, it's your form, and the physiology is how it works. So it's putting the two together of how form and function intertwine for a successful system, right? You're an organism chock full of body parts and things working inside your physiology. So take a breath. <laughs> um, when we talk about the body, we start by saying you're an organism, right? And that's what this is. This is just kind of a level of organizations we have and I teach it backwards. So when Level one is actually something called the chemical level. I'm not ready to talk about that yet. I'm starting at number six, the organismal level. And here's this guy, and I almost wonder if this Mark Nielsen is his name. So maybe this is Mark. Hi, Mark. 
Um, like I said, this is my fourth time, so I've already lectured this <laughs> many times, and I've seen Mark and his cute little smile. So Mark is an organism at the organismal level consists of different systems, right? So as an organism, you consist of the digestive system. What other systems can you think of? Um, anyone? Respiratory, that's usually a good one. Respiratory system, right, because you breathe. Oops, I was writing something else, I was writing lungs. Um, you consist of, what's a good one, muscular system, oh, so you're welcome to my struggle. Muscular system, you have different types of muscle. Hmm, what else, skeletal? So actually there's 11 systems. And all 11 systems work together to make the organism. The 11 systems are all on the next slide, so I'm not gonna rattle them all off. So if I take a system, like the digestive system, it consists of many different organs working to a common function. So because they all work to a common function, uh, those organs together make up the system. But uh, if we look at it just as an organ and we stick with like the digestive system, well, we have the stomach, we have this uh, esophagus, we have the small intestine, you know, there's a whole slew of organs associated with the digestive system. Okay, so organs working together to a common function is a system. If I take one organ and I go, what is this organ made of? It's made up of different tissues. So this is breaking it down into the tissue level. Different tissues. Oh, son of a biscuit. See, the struggle is real. I will say that a lot. Um, different tissues come together to make an organ. And there's four main categories of tissues. We're not going to go into what they are right now because uh, that's like the worst chapter. Um, they're dead boring, but we will be doing those after your first exam and going into the tissues and the different tissues. Um, and in each category, each bucket, there's all these different types. So you can have, you know, a smooth muscle tissue with an epithelium and a connective tissue, and they will make up this structure called the stomach. Right. So. If I go, okay, tissues is a really ugly middleman. Um, tissues, if we jump into what they're made up of, they're made up of different cells that have come together to work a common function. So I have it back to the cell level or the basic unit of life. And what are cells made up of? Well, cells are made up of atoms and molecules. And atoms and molecules together make up the chemical level in the structure structural organization so that's like already those so those are my different levels i have chemical different atoms molecules come together to make up a cell different cells come together to make up a tissue tissues come together to make up an organ different organs of a common function come together for a system and then you have mark who is just a bag full of um different organ systems all right bye mark We'll see you later. Um, so like I said, there's 11. Well, I'm going to use this little pen because I don't really like the fact that there's 11. To me, this guy here that's 1 is really 2. So to me, there's 12. I don't care. You want to learn it as 11? You want to learn it as 12? Either way, but I don't think it would, it's nice what they did to Mr. Lymphatic System. Oh, all right. So these next few slides just go into the different systems. So when you're looking at the different systems, you want to know what is the system name? What is the system's function? What are a few different organs associated with the system? Okay. Maybe you know these, maybe you don't. We're going to just look them over briefly. Normally I'd be asking you about them and you'd be telling me, and now you just listen to me talk about them. Woo -hoo. Uh, anyway, we start with this big fancy word, the integumentary system. Integumentary is your skin. Right, why did they just say skin? I don't know. 
It's the skin and then there's accessory organs of the hair, fingernails, and toenails. Can you just say nails? Sweat glands, and you have a couple different types of sweat glands in the body, and oil glands. And we got plenty of those. Its function is mainly to protect the body, but it has all these other functions, and we'll go into specifics when we learn this. This is our first system that we cover after we do that horrible chapter on tissues. And so protection is a big one, making vitamin D, um, taking information in, sensory information of touch and pressure and pain and temperature of heat and cold. I got a little adipose fat tissue, so there's my insulation, which you actually need. You know, fat's not always a bad thing. Um, it regulates body temperature by sweating and by causing blood vessels to go deeper in for being cold. Um, and this eliminates some waste. I just hate that one. You're going to tell me that one every time I ask on a test. I hate that function for skin because everyone's like, oh, your skin excretes all your waste and whatever. Moving on. All right. So the next system is the skeletal system. And the skeletal system is the bones, the cartilage, and the ligaments. I don't know why it didn't include that one. But ligaments connect bones to bones, so it should really be part of the skeletal system. And the functions are support, right? Because otherwise it'd be a puddle. Kind of need bones. Um, and protection, right? Because we have the skull protecting the brain. You've got the ribs and the pelvis kind of protecting the heart and the lungs. And you know, I guess your reproductive structures if you're a girl. Um, and so provides areas, surfaces for muscles to attach to so that you can move and not just slide around on the ground as the blob. And then what we'll also learn is that inside your bones, at the ends of long bones, like these long bones, uh, you'll find red bone marrow, and that is the stem cells for uh, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, the starting material. I like the skeletal system. Whoops, Daisy, go back. All right, so we've got the muscular system. The muscular system, there's three different types of muscle. There is skeletal muscle. That's the muscle you control, right, because muscle is movement helps maintain posture produces heat but really the main thing is movement uh, so i have skeletal muscle which is the muscle you control smooth muscle lining hollow organs like your digestive tract so when you eat that bag of m ms i just shoved in my face in the car an hour ago it leaves the stomach and moves through my body and then cardiac muscle which is your heart so that's kind of an important one all right and that's my muscular system uh, the nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. That's the central nervous system. And then it's all these peripheral nerves and receptors even bring, either bringing information to, ooh, that's a great arrow, to the central nervous system or motor movement and having a response out of the nervous system. So brain and spinal cord are the central nervous system. And then everything else is peripheral. It's outside of it. So the peripheral nervous system is just either getting an input or doing output um, from the central nervous system. Input is sensory, output is motor. Well, you learn that, I don't know. If you decide to stick with this class, we'll be doing nervous system later this semester. All right, endocrine, this is the last system of the semester. I kind of like this guy, but by the time we get to him, you guys are just fried and you're like, who cares? Um, but he's kind of cool. And these are all glands, right? Not the things in your neck. Those are lymph nodes and glands. Although you do actually do have a couple glands in your neck. Um, and they make hormones. Hormones are chemical messengers that are made in one place and then do something else somewhere, somewhere else. So they leave, enter into the bloodstream, travel around in the blood. That makes endocrine. Till it gets to a target organ. So... You have many different endocrine glands in the body, including the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the thyroid is in the upper neck, a parathyroid is behind it that um, regulates calcium. And then lower on, kind of on your heart, is the thymus. Where's the thymus? Oh, you know what? He's not considered an endocrine gland. My bad. Let's just erase that. There's no thymus. All right. Thyroid, parathyroid. Adrenal glands sitting on top of your kidneys. Those guys are really important. Don't mess with them. Uh, your pancreas. Pancreas is like the scariest. 
organ in the body, and it makes insulin and glucagon for managing blood sugar. Um, so kind of critical, right? And then you have your reproductive organs, endocrine glands that make testosterone, the testes, and estrogen and progesterone coming off the ovaries. So that's my endocrine. My next system and our little tour of body systems is cardiovascular. You guys probably know it is circulatory. I'm going to write in the circulatory system up here, and then I'm going to scribble it out because I never, ever want you to call cardiovascular system circulatory system. I just don't like it. It's cardiovascular. It consists of the heart and the blood vessels. Blood vessels are veins and arteries and capillaries. Capillaries are where things exchange. They're kind of important as part of the cardiovascular system. And then it's the blood that's inside these vessels. Um, blood is very important for helping manage body temperature. Transport transporting really is the deal. Um, regulates at pH levels. pH is your level of acidity. Ugh. If you're like, well, I don't know if you can see my crappy little pen or not. Um, Trying to write is just the most ridiculous thing on these remote lectures, but I try, and I don't always succeed. Okay, what other systems do we have? Oh, we have the lymphatic system and immunity, which I think are two separate systems. The lymphatic system is your lymph vessels. You have a whole other set of, of vessels in your body outside of cardiovascular, and they transport this fluid called lymph. And lymph is kind of cool, actually. I like it, but we don't talk about it this semester. And it is your lymph nodes, your spleen, and your thymus, which I already talked about a little bit by accident. Your immune system are your fighters, non-specific white blood cells, and specific fighters of your B cells and your T cells. Um, so all of that is part of the immunity. And there's two separate functions. Um, it the lymphatic system returns proteins and fluid lost in tissues back to the blood. It transports dietary lipids from your gastrointestinal tract to where they need to be. And then there's like the immune system function of these two guys, and that is fighting infections. Fair enough. Okay, what else do we have? We have the respiratory system. I like that we're alternating genders, you know. It's very nice oh, to be young again like these cute little pictures. All right, so the respiratory system, the main player is my lungs, but then it's the pathway to get to the lungs. And that includes the nasal cavity and the larynx and the trachea and the bronchi and bronchioles and da 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 All right, so I think that's kind of what I mentioned. Those are different organs and the function. Yeah, it's to get oxygen in so that it can enter into the bloodstream carried on the hemoglobin and red blood cells. But it's also the only way we have to get rid of this carbon dioxide gas. We have other ways to get rid of other, other things, but carbon dioxide is exhaled. And while well, oxygen, of course, is important, and I'd ask you why is oxygen important, but I'm not going to prattle on about it. I'm going to prattle on a little bit about... I try to. Ah, come back to me, little respiratory. Okay, so carbon dioxide. Oh, son of a biscuit. Alrighty, one more time, otherwise I guess I'm not. All right, so CO2 is carbon dioxide, and your body is mainly water. So if you have carbon dioxide in an aqueous environment, it becomes this little middle guy, H2CO3, which can turn into H plus and a little other guy called HCO3 minus. So H2CO3 is known as carbonic acid. So carbon dioxide in your body turns into an acid. And the acid breaks down into hydrogen ions, which is actually a, no, I don't want to end the show. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to write strong acid, right? And then this other little guy here is known as bicarbonate ion. And he's a buffer. He's actually super important. Has a lot of awesome jobs uh, that we'll talk about next semester in person. 
I'm going to be hopeful. Okay, what do we have left? We have the digestive system, which we've already talked about a bunch of organs associated with the digestive system. You can certainly read through. And the functions are to get nutrients in, dissolve them, chemically break them down into their subunits so that I can absorb them and continue to stay alive. And then, of course, we need to eliminate the undigestibles. I think the digestive system is boring, but whatever that's in the spring system and here is oh, my favorite my favorite the urinary system which is the kidneys you have two kidneys and they're kind of below your ribs in the back right kidney punches hit somebody in the back the bladder and then the pathways of the ureters goes from the kidney to the bladder and the urethra will go from the bladder out to the body um, and the kidneys do everything can't live without molars, well, not what you can live without. They will um, eliminate urine. Urine is waste, metabolic waste, nitrogenous waste, all sorts of acidic waste that you can't get rid of. Can only get rid of carbon dioxide waste. Um, but there's plenty of other forms of waste and you need your kidneys to do that. And they will also regulate your blood volume. They will manage acid base balance, your pH. They will manage your blood pressure by managing your blood volume, um, maintaining this balance of body fluids. And um, they will also be uh, have a role in the creation of red blood cells production, I guess is a better word. And what do we got left? Oh, we got the reproductive system. So the reproductive system is the only system in your body that you can't live, that you can live without. Although I think some of you guys can't live without it. <laughs> uh, and it's needed to continue on the species, but um, you know, and create sex hormones to make men men because it will make testosterone and make women women because it will make estrogen so if we're looking at the female we have the organs of ovaries uterine tubes which i hate that word i call them fallopian tubes the uterus and the vagina in men there's like a million different structures but there's the testes and the epididymis and the vas deferens and that loops around into the penis with the spongy tissue and then you have accessory organs of seminal vesicles the prostate and the I think it must be these weird little circles here that are the bulbal urethral glands. Um, so the function is to make sex hormones, to make eggs and sperm, and then of course with the females to produce milk if you can. Not everybody can and it's okay. Um, so yeah, that is the first few items. And I'm going to stop here and call it done. So I'll see you on another recording uh, talking about the characteristics of living human organisms and probably homeostasis. That'll be our next lecture. See you later. Bye.